gonna sing, la la la, we're gonna play. We're gonna move and groove and have some fun today. It's time for music class. It's time for music class. We are singing, tracking the tucker, crisscross applesauce. Hands in our lap, voices off. Thank you. Here's what we're doing in music today. Elementary Academy scholars will be able to move to music, discover our secret word of the day, discover instruments of the keyboard family, and listen to and analyze music. So those are our goals for the day. The first thing that we're going to do is move to music. So I have my dancing scarf, just a piece of fabric. So what I'd like you to do is find something in your home that you can use like a dancing scarf. Maybe you have something kind of like this. Maybe you have your winter scarf. Maybe it's a dish towel from the kitchen. Maybe it's a towel from your, rest, from your bathroom at home. Just any kind of cloth. If you can't think of anything that you have, you can just use your hand to do this activity. So if you need to pause the video now and go and find something in your room, in your house that you can use like my scarf, now would be a great time to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play for you a song and what I'd like you to do is make your scarf match the music. And here's what I mean by that. If the music is very fast, your scarf is gonna move very fast. If the music is slow, your scarf will move slow. If the music is kind of bouncy, your scarf will be bouncy. If the music is smooth and calm, your scarf will move smooth and calm. If you hear lots of high sounds, you can put your scarf up high. If you hear low sounds, move your scarf down low. Okay? Uh, I want you to try it on your own. And if you need assistance, if you can't quite hear what the music is doing, you can watch me and match me. But your goal is to make your scarf match the music. This song is called Walk Through Life. I really like it, and I think you will too. It's kind of a long song. We're not going to listen to the whole thing. there. So uh, I'm going to tell you what I kind of heard and what I was doing with my scarf and hopefully you were kind of doing something similar. So I noticed that the music was pretty bouncy. It was not really a smooth song so my scarf was bouncing around. I noticed that the music was kind of fast, not super fast, not presto, but maybe like an allegro skipping speed. Um, and I noticed that the singers were singing kind of high so I tried to keep my scarf high and not down here, down low. Um, so that's moving to music. Um, when we get back in person on campus at Prodeo, I have like 60 of these. So we'll get to do a bunch of moving to music with dancing scars. That should be fun. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is to do our secret word of the day. I'm going to make my face a little bit smaller. Uh, so here we go. Our secret word of the day. So I want you to think, is it on a line or in a space? That first one. That one's on a line. I know it's on a line because the line's going straight through the head of the note. If it's on a line, a sentence is fine. If it's on a line, a sentence is fine. If it's on a line, a sentence is fine. And I start at the beginning, down at the bottom. Every good burger deserves fries. So what letter would go in that first blank? This time I'm not going to write it down right away. We're going to see if we can just remember it. G every good. So I would write a G in that first space. All right, next one. 
is it out of line or in a space? That one's in a space. If it's in a space, you use your face. If it's in a space, you use your face. If it's in a space, you use your face. So I start at the bottom and work my way up. F A C E. F A C E. What letter matches where the head of the note is? A. Yeah. A. All right, so I have G A, and then this one I give you for free. That's a T. There is no T in the musical alphabet, because if I remember back to when we first started talking about this, the musical alphabet goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and it just repeats A through G. So there is no T in the music alphabet. All right, last note here. Is it on a line or in a space? It's in a space. If it's in a space, you use your face. If it's in a space, you use your face. If it's in a space, you use your face. F, A, C, E, F, A, C, E. What letter match that note? That's the E, yeah. Uh, so our last letter is E. So I'm looking at this, G, A, T for free, E, G, A, T, E. Our secret word of the day is gate, gate. Today we're gonna talk about uh, some different instrument families. There are a few different instrument families and when we're in elementary academy, we kind of break down the instrument families and get to learn them a little bit learn about the different instruments that you would find in them. And then today we're gonna to focus in on one. So uh, one of the instrument families that we're gonna learn about this year is the percussion family. Uh, the percussion family is the biggest family of instruments. And we'll talk about that a little bit later this year. Then there is the woodwind family of instruments, which we're gonna talk about a little bit in our next video and onward from there. Then there is the brass family, woo, which is Mrs. Al's favorite because she was a trumpet player and a French horn player when she was in school. The brass family, which we'll learn about later this year. There's the string family, instruments with strings, which we'll learn about later this year, more towards December. And then the keyboard family, which is what we're going to talk about today. So five main families of instruments, percussion, woodwind, brass, string, and keyboard. Keyboard is our focus today. Um, okay, I'm gonna move my face out of the way. So I thought I'd just tell you a little bit about the different characteristics of the keyboard family, and then we're gonna listen to some examples of each one. Um, so the keyboard family is named because all the instruments are played with some kind of keyboard. There's an example of a keyboard there on the screen. Not all the keyboards look like that, just kind of depends on the instrument, but those are the how the most keyboards look. Uh, levers pressed by the fingers. So you push those black and white keys, like the picture on your screen. They're usually black and white keys, but not always. Um, I've seen one instrument that we'll talk about today that has brown keys. That's pretty cool. Um, and, you know, sometimes people just want to make instruments look kind of cool. So you might see an instrument with like purple keys or blue keys sometimes. But most of the time, they're black and white keys. Um, now, when I say they're levers, that means something where when you push one side down, another side goes up, um, usually. Um, or maybe not, maybe something else happens on the other side when you push it down. And it all depends on the instrument, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, they can play more than one note at a time. That's called harmony. I'm thinking back to when we did, I love the mountains, I love the rolling hills. And Mr. Isles sang with me and we sang different things at different times. Harmony, more than one note playing or being sung at the same time. So when you play keyboard instruments, um, you usually play more than one instrument at the same time. And then at the bottom I wrote accompaniment instrument. An accompaniment instrument is one that you play while accompanying a person or another instrument. Um, I play an accompaniment instrument every day when I play my guitar and I accompany myself singing. So when you accompany, it means kind of like the background music when the melody is being played otherwise. Uh, okay, let's see what's on the next page. Haha. <laughs> okay, the first instrument we're going to talk about today is the piano. The piano is probably the most recognizable instrument in the keyboard family. The picture that's on your screen now, that's an example of a grand piano, um, which is the fanciest kind of piano. Um, but there's different kinds of pianos. So that's the fanciest kind. There's also something called a baby grand piano, which looks similar, it's just smaller. 
Then there's an upright piano. The upright piano is what we have in the music room. Um, what we will have in the music room. It's not there yet. It's stuck on the first floor still. Um, and then there are keyboards or digital pianos. And that's what you might see me play in the music room right now. Um, grand pianos are usually the most expensive. And the little digital pianos like I have in the music room, those are usually the least expensive. Grand pianos like that cost tens of thousands of dollars. Um, the little keyboard I have in the music room was maybe about $80. I did not spend a lot of money on it. Um, so when you hit the black and white keys on a piano, what happens is inside, like underneath that lid that's propped open in the picture, there's a bunch of little strings. So when you hit the key, a little hammer pops up. I was saying it kind of looks like the knuckle of my finger. A little hammer pops up and smacks the strings inside, and that's what makes the sound. Um, as you can see underneath the keyboard, there are some different pedals, they're called, little foot feet things that you press with your feet, and that changes the tone of, of the music a little bit. Uh, we're going to hear an example of the piano in just a minute. So that's the first instrument in the keyboard family we need to know, the, the piano. Uh, the next one is an organ. Uh, the organ is a little bit different. If you look down here towards the bottom, you can see the keyboard. But there's actually two sets of keys on an organ. And actually, that's, there's only two in the picture, but there's usually uh, a set down by your feet that play really low notes. Um, organs can be found in a lot of different places. Um, a lot of places of worship will have keyboards. And organs are played a little bit different than pianos. When you press the keys of a keyboard on the organ, it forces open bellows and tubes, and then the picture on the screen um, opens up those big silver pipes, and it presses, pushes air through the pipes, and that's what makes the sound. Um, so kind of like a wind instrument, which is pretty cool. Um, organs can be very loud. Organs can also be huge. They can take up entire buildings. They can be so big. Organs can also be pretty small, um, about the size of like an upright piano or a keyboard. I used to have one in my house before it broke. Um, but they're pretty cool. I, I find them at thrift stores sometimes, little little home organs, which is kind of cool. Um, they usually have a very powerful so sound. Whenever I think, think of organ sounds, I usually think of something spooky happening because they have kind of a creepy sound. And we'll listen to what that sounds like in just a bit. Okay, so we have the piano, and now we have the organ. The next instrument in the keyboard family is the harpsichord. So if you look at that picture of the harpsichord, it looks a lot like a piano, but there's a few big differences. Um, you see it has two sets of keys. There's a set of keys here and a set of keys up here. See how these are kind of inverted? The bigger keys are, in this case, brown, and the little kids keys are white. In a piano and in an organ, the big keys are white and the little keys are black. So that's a little bit different. It also has more feet down underneath the pedals. Um, and what's really cool about a harpsichord is, like I was talking about, when you hit a key on the piano, a little hammer pops up and smacks the string. In a harpsichord, you kind of play it more like a guitar where you pluck the string. So there's a little thing inside called a plectrum that's attached to each key. And it's kind of like a guitar pick. And when you hit the key, it plucks the string, um, which makes it kind of cool. And it sounds very different. Uh, there is this wonderful place in St. Paul called the Landmark Center. Um, and it has an instrument museum inside. And it's, as far as I know, last time I went, which I think was like a year and a half ago, it's free to go to. So if you have family that lives in St. Paul or if your family's planning some kind of cool outing or if you want to suggest a cool outing, you can go to the Landmark Center in St. Paul into the instrument museum and you can play a harpsichord and you can hear what it sounds like in person. And there's a whole bunch of other cool instruments there that you can check out. Um, there's a, a gamelan from Indonesia. There, It shows you how brass instruments can make their sound. Um, yeah, there's harpsichord, there's piano. So if you want a cool little field trip to take your family on, go to the Landmark Center in St. Paul and go to the instrument museum that's there. It's really, really cool. <laughs> All right, so that's a harpsichord. We had a piano, we had organ, and we had harpsichord. The final instrument we're going to talk about in the keyboard family is the accordion. And the accordion is very different 
because it is a portable instrument. When you have pianos, when you have organs, when you have harpsichords, whenever you have them, they pretty much stay where they are, especially when you're playing them. They can't really move around with those instruments. Um, but the accordion you hold in your hands and you play standing up. Um, I have an accordion. It smells really bad because it's really old. Uh, we got it at a thrift store once. Thrift store is a great place to find instruments, by the way. Um, and it's broken. I do have one. It's very heavy, but they, but mine is a, a big accordion. They have smaller ones called concertina accordions. Um, but you can see there's a keyboard here, black and white keys. You press them down and that opens up these bellows that are inside. And this part kind of folds and unfolds. And when you fold and unfold it, it pushes air in and out of the instrument. And that air blows through reeds and that's what makes the sound. Accordions are also different because they have these other, you see these little white polka dot looking things? Those are other keys that can make chords, more than one sound at the same time. Um, one of my favorite musicians in the world is called Weird Al Yankovic, and he is very popular for playing the accordion. And he plays some really cool parody songs. Um, so if you like goofy music, maybe you want to search Weird Al Yankovic on your Spotify playlist and see what you can find out. Uh, okay, so those are the four instruments of the keyboard family that we need to learn. The piano, the organ, the harpsichord, and the accordion. The next thing I thought we would do is I'm going to play you some sounds of these four instruments so that you can hear what they sound like. I hope this website works for us. Uh, okay, so the first one is the piano. Now it says here, you can see piano forte. Piano forte in Italian means soft, loud, or quiet, strong. Um, and that's kind of, so piano is kind of its nickname, which is cool. Uh, so we're just going to hear a little example of a piano. I'm guessing most of you have heard a piano before, but maybe you just haven't connected that thought in your brain of this is that instrument. This is called a piano. So let's just listen to a little nine second clip of the piano. Uh, and I'm going to scroll up on my screen. There's another piano. Uh, here's an example of an organ sound. We're not going to listen to this whole clip, just a little part of it. See, I think that sounds spooky. I like it. It also kind of reminds me of a carnival. Uh, here's the sound of a harpsichord. That's the one that is plucked by the strings inside. Sounds like this. I think a harpsichord sounds very fancy. There's other members of the keyboard family. There's a harmonium, clavichord, a celesta, um, but uh, we're going to listen to an accordion. There's a lot of different members of the keyboard family that we're not listening to, but those are, we're just listening to the four main ones. This is a longer example, but we're just going to listen to a little piece of it. Scroll down a little more. The accordion sounds like this. When I think of the accordion, I also think of French music, which is pretty cool. All right, I'm going to go back to my slideshow. Okay, so we saw and listened to the four main instruments of the keyboard family that we need to know. There's the piano, black and white keys, hammers inside, strike the key uh, strings. Then there is the organ, big pipes, air is pushed through the pipes with many different keyboards, two, three, sometimes even more sets of keyboards. There's the harpsichord, which looks a lot like a piano, but it usually has two sets of keyboards and it plucks the strings inside the instrument. And then there's the accordion, um, which is a portable instrument and air is pushed through bellows. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to listen to a song called Rondo a la Turca, um, which is Title of the title of the song means Turkish, meaning from the country of Turkey. Um, and Rondo is just a certain kind of song that has a certain form to it. So Turkish song is basically what this means. So here's what 
we're going to do. We're going to listen to the song. I don't think it's super long. Three and a half minutes. And I want you to start to answer the questions that are on the screen. Is the music fast or slow? Maybe you want to use words like largo, andante, allegro, or presto, if you want to really challenge yourself. Is the music high or low? Is the music smooth or jumpy? Is the music loud or soft? And what instruments do you hear? Hint, one of the instruments, or the instrument is one of the instruments we talked about today. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm gonna write my thoughts down on my clipboard. And if you have a whiteboard or a scratch sheet of paper nearby, if you have your cell phone, you wanna just type a little note to yourself. Um, as you listen, try to answer these questions. And then when it's done, I'll come back and I'll let you know what I heard and see if our answers kind of match. So here we go. Rondo a la Turca, featuring some kind of keyboard instrument. Got about 20 seconds left. All right, finish up your last thoughts if you're writing these thoughts down. That's great. And I'm going to go through the answers and tell you what I thought. Uh, I'm going to make my screen a little bigger now. Okay. So for, is the music fast or slow? I wrote that it was pretty fast. I wrote an allegro tempo. That's what, that's where I would put it. You might've said it was andante, but I would think 
most people, if they're familiar with listening to music and starting to analyze music, would say it was somewhere on the fast side. Um, I wrote high sounds. Uh, on piano, usually you have high and low sounds kind of playing at the same time. But I thought overall, I heard a lot of high sounds and even the stuff that's usually low wasn't as low as it could have been. So I put high sounds for this one. I wrote, it was jumpy music. I also added extra words, bouncy and exciting. Um, I know some people might listen to instrumental music, music with just instruments and no words, and might think this isn't very exciting to me. But I think compared to some piano only music, piano solo music, I think this is pretty exciting. Uh, but that's just me. I wrote this as a medium volume. It's not super loud. It's not super quiet. Some parts are louder, some parts are softer. So that was kind of all over the place. Uh, the piano isn't really meant to be a really loud in your face instrument. Um, if I were to have the same song played by an organ, I would say, yes, it's loud because organs usually have to fill a big temple or a big church. Um, but pianos don't have to be super loud. They're usually meant to be played in a small room, maybe at, at someone's home or in a smaller space. So it's not meant to be super loud. Uh, the only instrument I heard was piano. That was it. And we'll get more familiar with that as we go. I also wrote a couple other things at the bottom as I was listening to the end. I wrote that it was in 4-4 four, four time, which is something we're going to be talking about soon. And then I just started listening to the different rhythms that I heard. And I saw ti-ti-ti-ti-ta and a tika 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 ta which we're going to be talking about hopefully very soon in our music videos. So I hope you heard some of the things that I heard. I hope maybe you were able to identify that that was a piano sound. That would be a great goal for you today if you did that. Um, we're going to keep working on this. And next time we're going to start lo look, looking at a different family of instruments, which will be pretty cool. All right, we've done all, we've done all the things on our to-do list. So the last thing we have to do is do our train exit. So breathe with me, Elementary Academy. Here we go. <sighs> All right. Thanks for joining me today. Have a wonderful, magical, and musical day.